I, I have six o'clock on my mic clock, so we are going to begin. So, call to order the uh, public hearing for the town zoning regulations. Uh, so, I'm going to ask Sally Miller to present the, what's before us. Okay, so this is continued from um, the last meeting. Um, it is an amendment that the Planning Commission voted on at their meeting, meeting in March of this year, so it's already been several months since it's been in, in effect. Um, when the Planning Commission votes on a regulation like this, it is effective immediately when the Planning Commission votes on it. The Select Board has 180 days to act on it. So you are still in that 180 day period where the, <coughs> the zoning amendment is in effect right now. So the amendment to the town's ed zoning regulations to remove five acre and forestry reserve exemptions from section 526 short term rentals. Um, conditional use permit shall be required for all, all short term rentals. So what it is doing is it's leveling the playing field. We understand that five acre and forestry zones are different than the other ones, but it was an easy way to just sort of get a handle on the short term rentals. Um, previously, short term rentals in five acre and forestry did not require a permit. So we have no way of knowing how many <coughs> short term rentals are actually operating in the community. So this is a way to going forward that we can at least assess what is happening with short term rentals. We anticipate that we will be rewriting these regulations in the near future. The trustees have given us 90 days to rewrite the village and I expect that we will be working on both at the same time. So Sally, do we have, last month we decided to postpone these. Mm -hmm. Do we have the timing opportunity to postpone again? Yes, yes. So I think you're, I mean, um, the Planning Commission meeting was March 6th, <coughs> so um, that will bring to 180 days is approximately the beginning of September, so your August meeting, you can still take action. Um, in September, it will be past the 180 days. If you take no action, then it, it goes away, which means the exemption will st would still be in place. Right. It just goes away? Yeah, this, we have this, 180 days to act. Right. That's to adopt it. Or, and if we don't, then it's non-existent, right, right, right. okay? Right. So, um. so basically this, this puts the five acres in forestry on the same playing field as everybody else? Yes, it does, permits, it does, right, everything. it permits, it's a conditional use permit. So there are a number of requirements, I could go through them if you want, that you have to follow to get a conditional use permit. It talks about parking, it talks about hours of operation, the number of times you can do it per year. Say fire, coal, and everything. Um, actually, I'm not sure if we, because those are, they have to, it says you have to comply with the Department of Taxes, and I'm not sure wh whether we cover the safety regulations, but that's really not typically what the zoning board does. That's the state. Okay, so, but that's part of anyone else that yep. opens up yep. a short term, yep. right? Yep. And, and we admit that five acre <laughs> and four street are different, but you know, to rewrite the regulations and understand what it is, is is a fairly long process and we will be starting it and we're asking for public comment. Um, we will start at our August, I think it's 7th meeting for the Planning Commission. We'll start discussion on short-term rentals. Question. Well, I, I think I got answered. I was just wondering if it um, restricted the number of times that you could rent or was it only a um, registration? But it sounds like it's going to restrict the amount of times that you can rent. Is it the same as the town yeah. or the village? The same as the town. Um, my question is if, and I'm not, I'm not speaking for. Could you, could you please? Oh, sorry. Them, these are the instructions up back here. Could you say your name, please? Barbara O'Connell. And where you live? I live in Woodstock. Um, my question is if all of the regulations are are amended to affect the five acre zone and forest and the list of regulations seem tolerable meaning to register or to conform to safety guidelines um, and so <coughs> on they all seem um, reasonable with the exception of the number of days that you are allowed to rent the property and in the village it's restricted to i believe six six which is not six days, it's six, 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 days. Six, 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 six rentals. Six rentals. So one rental could be A month. 25 days right. or whatever. Okay. Um, but it's, it's limited to six occurrences 
of rentals um, and also includes the month of, of fall foliage, September no. to, no? no. Yeah. It's, that's, that's actually exempt. Foliage it's season it's is exempt. Foliage so is exempt. So, six months. So, so the, six months. So the that sticking point appears to be the number of days or incidences, occurrences, the number of occurrences of rentals that are um, approved. That, to me, seems to be the, the holdup. Sally, has it always been 10 times in the village? Um, and yes, in the, town? in the town has been 10 times. 10 times in the town. Yes. And, and, and that is something that the Planning Commission will look at when they review the entire ordinance. Um, this was a way to just sort of get a handle on it and keep it going forward. It, 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 it is probably, will probably change, but I can't say that for sure. Gentlemen. Uh, my name is Dan Sullivan. I live on uh, Hollow Farm Road in Woodstock. <coughs> I own two properties there. A small property that I live in in retirement and a large property that I built some time ago for my grandchildren to live in. Uh, I probably have been derelict because I have been acting on a <coughs> what I thought was the basis of what you were considering, but some assumptions that I'm not hearing tonight. And I did go to the previous hearing where these assumptions were, were aired. One, one was that properties that have been in operation for a period of time would be grandfathered. Is that true? Yeah. It would yes. be. Yes. Sure. I have not seen that. Uh, in, in a temporary basis, or is it, are you simply not going is, to be changed? Is that changed? in writing somewhere? Uh, that's a Vermont state statute. I haven't found it yet. It's, <coughs> it's a okay. Vermont state statute. What, do you know what it is? Um, I don't know what it is. You'll have to ask Michael. But okay. um, in did, terms of zoning did. changes going forward, if there are operating businesses, they, they are, they are grandfathered. So that's with or without a permit? That's with or without a permit. They would need to, um, <coughs> we haven't formalized this, but I've discussed it with Michael, they would need to prove that they were operating a short-term rental through a tax receipts um, or other ways of, of saying that they were running it as a business. So well, I've, I've been in conversations with the planning department. I actually, they, they requested that I file a letter indicating the status of the property. It's been rented as a short-term rental for a number of years and I've, I've been paying my taxes to the state and to Woodstock um, I've been inspected by the state fire marshal I own a, approximately 100 acres and I have a, a main home which is built for my grandchildren that has six bedrooms because I couldn't live in a six-bedroom home after my wife died I built a three-bedroom four years ago I built a, a three-bedroom home on the same property where I could live and so I could support the larger house so it would be available for my grandchildren. And in fact, they're here now. They're here for six weeks. But one of them lives in Santa Fe and one of them lives in Chicago. And the third just moved here to Woodstock and bought a home on River Street a year ago. I'm delighted with that. But she lived in New Orleans before that. So it's financially impossible for me to maintain this property. And, and rent it out to less six people or less for six bedroom house and to rent it out ten times a year. I have no problem with being regulated. The state fire marshal was actually extremely helpful to me. He came in, he found some problems, including a handrail that I had installed on a porch. And uh, he asked me to put some fire signs up and put a metal canister near the fireplace. It was about eight things. All of them common sense things I just simply hadn't focused on. I don't mind being regulated. I don't mind registering, but what I do mind is being put out of, I will have to sell my farm. I've owned it 35 years, I've been a good taxpayer, and I will have no, have no opportunity to, be, to, to hold this farm together if I don't have short-term rentals. And these regulations put me out of business. They're not even close to me. I can manage them. I can't manage them. There's no way. Can I have a question? So are you operating a short-term rental right now? Yes. So, so you're grandfathered? Well, you know, I'm a lawyer, so I don't want to equip with you, but grandfathering doesn't mean much to me as a word, because does it mean that when I sell my property, it now falls into the existing? Mm -hmm. that, that is a question, and we, I don't have And, and if, I, if, I, if I sell my property right now, I have two homes on it, yep. the market value of my property will be substantially reduced because part of essential part of the market for homes of my value are people who who, who need an, uh, an extra support of uh, rental income 
to maintain these properties. I maintain this property at a very high level. I do that because it personally satisfies me. Our family is extremely close to this land. We feel like legacy holders from a, a property that was, was uh, John Curtis was the original founder of Curtis Howell. He fought in the Revolutionary War. He got a land grant and his home is, we restored on my property. It's part of my home. I, I, I can't, I, I don't know if I can hold out of the house through a sale, but, but, but this telling me I'm grandfather does not put the problem away. It delays it until the next time there's, a, there's an opportunity to oppose something else. And it clearly, well, I, I, I guarantee you that people will say, well, it's grandfathered, but of course it isn't if, if you have a new, a new owner. That person is picked up. And that, that affects me right now. It affects the market price. It affects my banks. Well, the bank financing, I don't think the banks are aware of what this could do to high-end properties. Okay. All right. I'm sorry we went on, but I'm very personally okay. proud. My wife is buried on my farm. I think we hear, hear you loud and clear, sir. Thank you. I'm sorry if I sounded, oh, it's fine. but I, I didn't realize just how serious it was until here, I got here. We're here to hear you, but uh, I think we okay. hear you. Thank you. So I would just say that, um, <coughs> you know, as chairman of the Planning Commission, we really feel like this is a, a discussion that we should be having at the Planning Commission level to really determine what the correct regulation should be. We, we will listen to everyone. We will hear stories. We will understand the implications of, of what we are writing. And we, we want to write regulations that are fair to the community, that are regulations that can be enforced, and that we have heard from a number of different people. Um, both sides of the story, and so it will not be an easy moving forward, but I think the Planning Commission has been talking about this for a number of months, and we're, we're ready to keep going. Anybody else? Kaya? Uh, Kaya Pickett in South Woodstock. Um, but if you, if you, if this gets voted on tonight, it's, it that doesn't, that gives you the opportunity to keep what would be in place, which would be to restrict us to 10 times. So if by chance, I mean, I know that you're saying that you're going to rewrite these things, and but it seems odd that it would be re that it it would go backwards again, right? So you'd say, all right, well now you, you're going to rent ten times, but you know, going in the future, we think we're going to allow you to rent twenty-five times. It, it, it very rarely goes that direction. So that's it seems like it's gone in the direction of more restriction. Right. So that's why I was suggesting postponing it. So we can postpone this for another month. By the time we meet, the planning commission will have met and we will know in which direction they're going and whether it's worth doing this temporary thing or not. <coughs> well, it's not temporary, actually. It's yeah. Yeah, I'd I like to postpone it. Yeah. I just have one final comment. Um, it, it feels like, to me, as a property owner, it feels like this is getting dragged along and postponed and there's never really anything final about it. There's a lot of discussion and it, it, it feels like it's going up and down depending on which meeting you attend. <coughs> One meeting sounds very promising to a homeowner like myself and then the next meeting sounds very detrimental, like we're going to lose it all. So um, I feel at least sitting on my side of the <coughs> table that I'm constantly thinking and worrying about what is going to happen to me and my properties and how I'm going to manage them going forward. So, I mean, in all due respect to the process, it just seems to be continually being dragged out. And I, you know, I, I would really like for it to come to some kind of a conclusion, but it seems like even the proposals that have been issued, or that have been um, uh, suggested are drastic. But Robert, are you not in the same place as Mr. Sullivan, that you're grandfather? I'm sorry. Yes, I am grandfather. Mm. But I think um, to, I, I'm fortunate in that regard. But again, in, as Dan is saying, being grandfathered sometimes doesn't really last. And it can always be, it can always be changed depending on what the next regulations that are, that are being installed. I'm just saying that there's always a possibility. So again, sitting on my side of the table, it doesn't always feel very comforting to say, well, I don't have nothing to worry about because I'm grandfathered. And my, uh, my friends who are also um, property owners who may not be grandfathered, I mean, I'm feeling the same pressure for them. I can't really sit here and say, oh, I don't need to go to this meeting because I'm grandfathered. You guys, good luck. I mean, I think I, I feel like I'm, I'm compelled to speak for the group. Mm -hmm. 
um, that everyone has the same concerns and the same fears about what is going to happen to my property and what's going to happen to me in my ability to own my property that I've had for 25 years or going forward. And I know we, we all have different stories. I'm not trying to be a blanket here, but I, I, I would like to, to suggest that, the, pro, that the, the amendments to these proposals, to these regulations, are severe and they're extreme. I think they're extreme. And I'm asking that some sort of middle ground be achieved so that no one is suffering on either side of the fence. Uh, as I said earlier, I'm happy to conform to any kind of regulations that are there. But I think that sometimes the restrictions on the numbers of days <coughs> hurts a lot of people. It so may not the, hurt me uh, specifically, but it hurts a lot of people. So the Planning Commission will have hearings. There will be some new regulations. There's going to be some new regulations coming or suggestions coming from this board, also the village trustees, and, and you people. So, and I think Sally said they recognize they have to be fair to try to be fair to everybody across the board. Some are not going to be as happy as others, but uh, it's a process we have to go through. And um, I would suggest that you be patient with us. It is going to take some time. It's going to be probably the end of October before we get this, or end of November, I meant to say, before we get this all, you know, and the public hearings, and <coughs> it's a process. I appreciate time. that attitude, and, and I think the will. people in the room probably appreciate the um, flexibility that you're showing by your comments. And there's a lot of different opinions, and uh, we have to work through it. Somebody in the back who hasn't spoken. Thanks. Uh, Townsend Belial, other than Woodstock. Um, from just so I'm just a level set, from what I understand, the select board is looking for enough information to be able to make a sound decision. Mm -hmm. And Sally, with the Planning Commission, is charged to essentially go gather a bunch of data and opinion to understand and provide the information you need to make that uh, decision. That sounds sound to me. I've, I've sat with uh, uh, hospitality directors and other people from, who own uh, the hotels, motel side of things. I've sat with uh, a number of people who actually own uh, rentals. And I, I, there's, a, there's a lot of emotion involved with this. And I think what helps challenge that emotion is data. So I think it'd be sound to understand that the Planning Commission take their time but get as much data as possible. Maybe Sally, I don't know, if it'll help a little bit if you could outline uh, a little bit of the representatives on your Planning Commission and the, maybe perhaps the kind of data you're gonna get. I don't know if you plan to get a certain percentage of each of the parties involved, involved enough to gather adequate uh, a sample size, if you will, to gather such data. But I think that's, I think having that data instead of just opinions flying around, I think having that data, because everybody, look, every, I think when we talk about leveling the playing field, nobody will question that safety is a concern and, and that everybody actually needs to hold to certain safety regulations and fire codes and things of that nature. But beyond that, once you then level set, I think everybody's looking to be equal and even across the board and that's part of what you're hearing from the the, the homeowners who, who rent out homes that they're looking for so and i think data will help you solve for those challenges if, if that's part of where it goes and sally i don't mean to call you out but we know each other well enough mm -hmm. and hopefully yes. I, I look forward to the you opportunity have one more, you have one more speech <laughs> <laughs> sorry i'm a lawyer <laughs> trying to get the last word uh, I, I think what sally i, I don't know what you said is fine. I mean, I look forward to a discussion about how to responsibly run my short-term rental business so in a way that doesn't annoy my neighbors and doesn't create hazards to my guests or to me. Or, um, but if this were to pass, what, what's posted would, would change the law. Regulations can't undo what it, the ordinance itself says. So as long as I'm, I'm hearing that there will be no action taken until this process is complete, that's fine. But if you pass the ordinance that's posted on the wall right now, it, it changes the law, uh, the regulation. And, and you can't change, you can't take back something that's so plainly stated in, in the ordinance that you vote on. <laughs> Sally, you said that um, you don't have complete information 
statutory information about the grandfather part of it. And you are going to get that state information before this process is complete. So we can give you that leeway to do so. And we will work with you until it is accomplished. Yes. I'm Mary Nathan, I live in the village of Wista. So, you know, the way I see it, the way I understood the, the reason the five acre was exempt before was because there wasn't, as there, you weren't going to be so close to your neighbors. There was more the issue of controlling people coming in and out um, and bothering a neighbor, that that might affect a neighborhood. I, I think that was probably the reasoning, the rational, you know, why they did that. Um, personally, I don't really see a need. I feel like it should stay exempt because I feel like there's certain areas that they're already being regulated. And I just think it's a good business for the state of Vermont. It's not going to go away. And I feel in certain areas where it's more rural, it's not going to be, you're not going to be on top of a neighbor. It's not going to affect a neighbor as much. And they have to follow the, you know, the other regulations. I live in the village, and I want to see it still allowed in the village. And I think the regulations are very sensible for the village. Because you need, when you're in a closer neighborhood, yeah, there's going to be a more of an effect on neighbors. So moving forward, I kind of feel like there isn't really a need to be regulating. Um, uh, as before, I think they should be exempt. But. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. David Hill, uh, Woodstock. Uh, in that vein, have there been problems in the five and 25 acre zoned areas? I'm not aware of any, but I mean, um, you, would have to have, you would have to ask Michael that. I don't know really that. I, I don't think there have been. I so I think, think we might be trying to fix something that isn't broken. So the only other comment I'll make is is that it's not there are it's a complicated issue. I mean, we have home occupations that are allowed throughout the town, and they're allowed. People are allowed to have a business in their home. We <coughs> regulate that, so that's regulated throughout the town. So. We regulate different things. People can do um, bed and breakfast. Anybody who is a resident owner can do a bed and breakfast in their home. And I believe that's in any, again, any zoning district. They can do up to three bedrooms and they can do it as many times a year as they want. So we have different ways of, of sort of accommodating guest rentals. But the, the big issue that nobody's really talked about, and we have, it's come up a few times, and the Planning Commission will consider, you know, what impact does it have on the community as a whole? And the numbers that I'm looking at are how many units are being taken out of the rental market, how many units are being taken out of affordable housing properties. And, and those are numbers, going back to what T said, that we don't have and we don't know. And maybe it's insignificant, but unless we know that, it's really hard for us to make a decision. So these are, these are some of the issues that we're looking at as well. So <coughs> it's, it's not simple. So I, I really feel that you need to stop addressing how many things are taken out of a rental market versus this um, short-term rentals. They're two very, very different things. And Mary is agreeing with me over here. These are two very different things. People who are renting short-term, they may not rent to anybody who's in this rental market. They're still going to own it. Half of the people who are doing uh, short-term rentals may be people who are trying to supplement their income. If we want to have people come and move in here, there are young people that I have met who buy a house, fix it up. They may rent part of their house to short-term rentals because they can then afford to have that house they just bought here and fix it up. So we're encouraging those people to come in. We're not taking away from the affordable housing income, and they should be very, very <coughs> separate issues. Exactly. Again, these are anecdotes. We don't, we don't have hard numbers. So until we do, we can't really know what it is. It, it, I mean, we can have the discussion, sorry for interrupting, we can have the discussion round and round and, and take up the entire evening 
If you know the number of rentals that are out there, then what do you do with that information? Then do you begin to start regulating because it's more than 50, it's less than 100? I mean, what is the cutoff line that when you have the data, what do you do with it and then how does it affect <coughs> the people who are renting? If there's 150 rentals, what does that mean? If there's 200, what does that mean? If there's 38, what does that mean? What does the information tell you and how does it change anything? Basically, people are trying to save their homes. They're trying to... Okay, but is there anybody who hasn't spoken, who wants to speak, that's got something different to say? Because we have a... Yes, ma'am. Tisha Bus, I live in Woodstock. You know, Dorothy Parker lived in a hotel. So if we do want to level playing fields, we could talk about certain amounts of hotel rooms being available that come off of the short-term rental market. I'm just putting out a totally out-of-the-box type of thought. What did you say? Yeah, I'm sorry. Dorothy Parker was a famous writer, and she lived in a hotel most of her life. Mm -hmm. Unconventional, for sure. But I know we're talking about leveling playing fields, and there are many different types of housing out there. There are people living in pods in San Francisco where we could potentially take a very small footprint with a PUD and solve a housing problem that could easily put 20 to 30 to 40 people in a very small footprint. We have a lot of housing that needs to become available for 20 to 30 year olds and also to the elderly. And those type of people actually like living in a similar way. They want people close to them so that they can go to each other and, you know, can you go to the store for me and can you rock my baby for an hour while I take a nap? Perhaps we should start thinking about what the housing needs, it, needs actually are in a very separate compartment than what we have for our Airbnbs. Because they might not be, uh, we may not be able to solve one with the other. Thank you very much. I'd like to. Well, just one more thing. Is it different? It, it has to do with the antidotal comment that's being made. If it's antidotal that the, they aren't harming it, it's also antidotal that it is. And until we have proof on every level, nothing should be changed. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Pickett? I graduated from college in 1966 at UEM and moved to Woodstock. Um, and I, I mean, I, was teaching school, I was making a little over $5,000 a year and I needed to get another job. So I worked at the Woodstock Inn before they built the new inn. And if you remember, the Woodstock Inn was pretty much right on the road, there was a big porch. Do you know how many people I waited on that lived at the inn for two and three months for the summer? Yeah. Older people who came from New York and different parts. Hmm. And it was fine, and it was great, and they were part of the community, and they were wonderful to work with. And I have a short-term rental in South Woodstock. I'm very lucky that I rent it two or three <coughs> times a year for three months each, which is great. These people are part of our community. Sholey and Elaine, they've been coming for nine years. They are part of our community. And everybody in the village loves them. I, I Thank you. Thank you. Oh. One more. We, get, we have to bring this to close here. So being in real estate, as far as somebody brought up data, I really want to see the data on how many maybe corporations are buying these you know, supposed short-term rentals. I don't see that. I work for one of the biggest real estate companies in town. Um, I, I really want to see you know, some data there, you know, what's really going on. I think you're going to find and you're going to have to do a lot of digging, but I think we need the answers. I think you're going to find most of the short-term rentals, what we're saying here, these people are here, they're part of the community, they're living in their homes, and they're doing the supplemental Airbnb to keep them. And they're bringing business to town. It's just a good, you know, again, I want to see the data that there's this, okay. I don't know, what. Thank you. <laughs> just out of procedure, Sally, can you just outline your next steps? Because it sounds like that's where this conversation may move, and I think it'll help everybody to understand that if that's the case. Yes. Um, um, if I can close it out with that, that the plan next planning commission, we actually have a planning commission next week. We're not going to talk about short term rentals. <coughs> Too many other things. Our next planning commission meeting, regular meeting, is on August 7th. We have asked people to, that will be dedicated to short term rentals. 
We've asked people who have been coming to our planning commission meetings to attend that meeting. If you can get any information to writing in us before that meeting, it is great because it gives us some time to review it and understand what some of the issues are. Um, so that will start the conversation. Um, we have to remind people that in Woodstock we have two sets of zoning regulations. So we have a set for the village and a set for the town. The village trustees um, has given the planning commission 90 days to rewrite the village zoning regulations. Um, I'm sure that a lot of the same issues will come up in both village and town, but I think that we will be focusing on village first, unless we get a time limit from the select board to do the town. So. Pardon? You go on from plan in May. September. September? Well, then we'll, we'll be talking about that. But, but the process really is to um, start the conversation. We were waiting for that last short-term mental meeting that the select board had to, to, to get going, but I think the planning commission is ready to put it at the top of the agenda. Okay, thank you. Thank you all for your comments, and stay tuned. More to come. Thank you. Okay. So do we need to take a vote? Are you want to do it now? I don't know. Make a motion to uh, wait until we get into the regular meeting. Wait till we get into the regular meeting. Yeah. 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 Okay, um, is, it, is that issue being voted on tonight or the postpone. to postpone or not postpone or go ahead and make a motion. Okay, I'll make a motion to postpone adopting any new regulations for the five plus acre zone. For how long? Didn't you at the end of your motion yeah. for how to long? postpone for how long? until? Until this 180 day period is up. So we, I still want to look at which meetings we can, how many times we can do this before we hit this, this 180 until, days. I think you only have your August meeting. August meeting. Okay. Until time is up. Yeah. And we'll just it, we, you can do it in September, but it will be, the, the, it will be before your September meeting. Yeah. So, so we'll until the August meeting. It'll be meeting. after the September meeting. Yeah. Right. It'll be two yeah. days after, so we can leave town. <laughs> Uh, we can always have a special meeting. Yeah. Some yes. boards do that, you know. Yes. Yeah. Um, so 180 days takes us to September 6th, so we could postpone this decision until September the 6th. <coughs> By which time we'll know where, what the bigger discussion is. I'll second that. The motion has been made and seconded that we postpone it until September the 6th. Any further discussion? All those in favor well, say aye. September the 6th aye. Friday. Of course, if we have a, a special meeting okay. before that, we can um, take right. care of it right. at that meeting. We may be, after we, uh, after we go to that meeting of August 7th, we may come away with some information that we would be able to use at our August meeting. Um, no, yes. Sam. And I'll also say that the September Planning Commission is the fourth, so that is oh. also before yeah. the It is. Okay. Thank you. So I'll give two working meetings. Just clarification. It, I thought there was a posting of a joint meeting for July 29th on this topic as well. It's on the outside of the board as opposed to On this meeting. subject? It's on, um, it's on there, the 90 day. They, they filmed that it posted as a joint meeting. I'm sorry. But well, we can always do it again then. It's yeah. Ju July 27th meeting is on, um, the interim zoning um, bylaws, which would allow for a moratorium for the village, the, the village selected, but they made the mo the posting was posted as a joint meeting. Um, so the issue is about the village regulations, not the town. Okay, the, the posting specifically says it's not; it's about the entire town. And does it say the twenty-seventh or? <coughs> The 27th, I think. <laughs> There's a calendar. The 29th. 27th. July 29th. Seven. Seven. Um, 8.15 a.m. Okay. It's and a Monday morning, 8.15 a.m. July 29th. 
Okay, I have a motion on the floor. Is there any further discussion? Is it being seconded? I yes, it's it. second. Motion made and seconded. <laughs> any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Thank you. Okay. All right, we'll move on to our regular meeting. Thank, Thank you all you. for coming. <laughs> Additions to the uh, posted agenda. Um, so let's talk about the uh, con uh, IT services. Beth, to, uh, so we've been working with All Access for the past few months after um, parting ways with Nate Elmquist, and um, we are at that point where they've come in now and done a full, they switched us over to our new emails, and they've done some kind of, so they've done some work to secure our network and make us, our backups work and such. Um, what they're proposing in here is a, um, like a contract, monthly contract fee with them as well as upgrading our um, firewalls and Ethernet ports and all that at the five different locations where we have hubs right now, um, which um, I've been informed in the past and today that um, we are severely outdated by at least five years. So our firewalls are kind of like Swiss cheese. Um, so basically, if you think about a firewall being like a brick wall with mortar, we're missing a lot of bricks and we're missing a lot of mortar right now to prevent cyber attacks and such um, from happening. And this is their proposal to upgrade us to bring us to a secure... So starting July 1st budget, did we have uh, anything in the budget for this? I am not aware, Phil is not, I have not been able to talk to Phil about this um, as of yet, um, but this is kind of just to bring this to your attention and be aware can, that, you know. Can this wait until our August meeting so we have a chance to do more research on it? On the yes, financial and this, this is why I brought it to you tonight okay. um, as an addition, because I want you to be aware of what's going right, on and that we that. really need to take the time. So if, if if the board doesn't mind, I'd just soon put this off till we have a chance to At find out. At least we can have a review. Uh, what we've got review for and see what we right. can do about getting questions answered in the meantime. Yeah. Do you think that we need a competitive proposal, given it's thirty-six thousand dollars? Yeah, that's that's a good. Do we have right. we looked at it? Why did we end up with this? And because we because we, work with them. we parted ways with Nate. Yes. Rather abruptly, we contacted several different IT solutions that we were out there and everybody is overworked, overbooked. These mm -hmm. guys were available. Um, they're a bigger <coughs> team than a one person, one man show. They were able to take us on. They've worked with other towns um, and that's why we went with them at the time. Um, so this is their contract proposal. I'm happy to seek out others. Um, proposals from other groups and I'm also the thought that um, Mr. Spector brought up was maybe have somebody from town that might be willing to come in and just give us hey you know what they're taking you for a ride or you know what they they are respectable in their price because we are not IT people we don't know yeah. I, I wonder if there's any help with the Vermont League of Cities and Towns if they have an expert <sighs> they have been talking about the mm -hmm. cyber, but they refer everybody to one company, and that company is ballpark top of the price, and they'd be coming from Burlington, so travel times would be. Okay, so let's you know, let's just greater, let's so do a little yeah. more research on this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Ben. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be going into executive session later on <coughs> after the approval of the minutes. Um, the next is the Mount uh, Tom Community Solar Array out there at uh, Mount Tom. Um, you have a uh, letter in front of you. There really is nothing to us except, uh, I don't even know why we're getting involved in this. 
the Maybe. public utility. I'm Tasha. Oh. From the I live in Woodstock. Public utility, right. Yes. Thank you. Um, and I'm guiding, I'm the board president of Rainbow Play School yeah. and uh, mm. the proponent behind the solar array to help offset our school's needs and then to provide solar power um, in a community fashion. And the public utilities new regulations for application uh, requires that the town, the select board, and the regional planning commissions offer their tip of the hat for their support. Um, D at the regional planning commission, uh, they have reviewed it. They are in support. The planning commission is meeting tomorrow night to discuss it for a second time. And I'm here okay. in front of you. Understood. Thank you for that. Okay. <coughs> What's your pleasure? Uh, can I make? Yep. So, um, so the Planning Commission reviewed it or looked at it last week and, and part of the process is that towns that do not have an enhanced energy plan are required to um, assign a preferred site designation to solar projects in the community. Our enhanced energy plan is on the table right now as part of our town plan review. We did not have a vote on it last time because we didn't have quorum, so we're hoping to do that tomorrow night. It, it doesn't matter, it won't affect this particular project. However, what it means is that preferred sites mean that they, they get to do whatever they want on the site. If this um, enhanced energy plan had <coughs> gone through, this would be considered a constrained site, which means that we would ask for things like screening, um, which is what the Planning Commission will be talking about tomorrow night, is whether we are going to require any sort of screening um, or a different kinds of setback from the road or something like that. Th Right now, because we have to call it a preferred site, it, 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 we don't get that option of doing those sort of conditions on this type of an array. And um, I don't know if you folks have gone out and looked at it. it mm -hmm. There are some cones that show where it is. Um, there are, it is from certain angles quite visible. <coughs> and I don't know if the community has any concerns about it. It is tucked right over in the corner oh. of the Mount Tom oh. Hill. One but of the forms that we read suggested that uh, Mike Price had asked a screening that uh, the organization had agreed to. Right, but but my point is that I don't, I am not aware of what they have put on the table. Um, so I'm just going by what is in front of me now, which is that it is a preferred site does not necessarily allow for those kind of conditions. So they would not necessarily be required to do it as part of what you're signing right now. Uh, so I think Tisha could probably answer that because she gave us about 10 different documents to read. So while we are not required by the Public Utility Commission to have screening, we want to be a friendly town and community building, and so we absolutely have a budget item. Uh, that's quite substantial for screening, for one. Second of all, we did hold a public comment meeting in January, and Michael Brands was the only person that made screening suggestions, and we uh, agreed to most certainly meet him um, to discuss what uh, a plan should be for them, and we absolutely, uh, you know, some things are, it might be easier to actually see it and then say, okay, plant your trees here, here, and here, and we, we have a budget that will absolutely comply with a large number of Arborvita to uh, make him happy. Also, the panels do not face the road. They face away from the road because that's southern exposure. They're not trackers like the town's array, so they don't move. Um, so they will never face the road. They will always face away from the road. Um, and we do meet all the PUC setbacks. And at this point, the, uh, the preferred site definition is what the PUC's preferred site definition is. So if the town doesn't have that specific definition, we use the PUC's definition, which I granted is quite kind of non-existent, if you will. It's just uh, a decision. So by them not being, may I yes, yes. Um, By them not being moving and not tracking um, and not facing the road, the back of them will always be to the road. Is that what you're saying? Uh, it's a very unusual, it's not perfectly uh, perpendicular. 
So you, as you drive by Route 12, you actually kind of see them at an angle. Mm -hmm. Solar South would be, as you're looking at the building, this direction. So you'll always see them in this direction, either up or uh, <laughs> lying flat. They do adjust up and down twice a year. That's right. Yeah, um, you're taking down some trees and yes. to, to yeah, install this. We're taking down about four trees. And yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, you probably don't have the answer, but this is supposed to be sustainable. What happens to the solar panels in 20 years? It's a 30-year contract. Okay. Yeah. Um, the, not the, the contract, the, the solar panels themselves. The solar panels are a 25-year warranty. At the end of 25 years, the solar panels are warranted to produce at 80% capacity. So what we've written into our contract with all of our community members is at the end of 30 years, we will assess if everybody feels very comfortable with how their panels are producing, we will leave the array exactly as it is. However, as technology increases, what we wanted to do in our contract is give the opportunity to, if we wanted to take the same poles, but put panels up that were the same footprint, but two or three times more effective, and invite more community members in at the same footprint, we would like to be able to do that. So we wrote our contract um, to that degree. When we do come to a point where it decommissions, first of all, those panels just go back to Rainbow Play School, which likely um, at that point, we would just continue on with our school and the power. Uh, but if not, then they all go to, um, typically a project of this side, the size goes to bid. And somebody on the third party market will buy the used solar panels. People are using solar panels that are 60 years old today. So that could be very feasible. If not, they're 100% recyclable. Thank you. <coughs> okay. So, so yes. what's your pleasure? I yes. You want a motion? So I, I propose a motion that Butch signs this letter on our behalf to show our support for the project. I'll second that motion. Motion has been made and seconded that we provide support for the project <coughs> under 5103 and that I sign. All those, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Because I want to jump ahead on the uh, agenda here. We have uh, two, two town employees here that are on the payroll, so uh, I'd like to get them in and out. Um, Ken, you want to talk about the, um, the uh, roadside mowing and the uh, truck, right? Oh, the grading. Truck. What? Truck. Truck. Yep. Yeah, first up is truck is we're replacing George's Western Star it was sent out to bid and looking through the minutes it was never approved to order so I'm asking for, for permission to order that truck is bid so we had this discussion and we approved it but we it was never approved to <coughs> excuse me actually order the truck oh, okay the, I believe Beth put in your packet the bid yeah. for So do we just need a motion to approve okay. the purchase of the truck? Okay. Yeah. I propose a motion to approve the purchase of the truck as specified in this letter. This bid for me, TJ. Motion's been made. Is there a second? Did you get all of this truck pretty quick or are okay. they way behind? John I think says that we got to get like a second. Okay, so <laughs> I have it. I have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, just quick, is this a lease or a purchase? How it's paid for is a discussion. I think I'm this was having. a lease purchase. I okay. believe so. Yeah. But yeah. 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 It's a lease <coughs> purchase. Yeah. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Roadside mowing. The second item is the roadside mowing. I was notified rather late this year that the person that does our roadside mowing would not be bidding. Went out to bid, received no bids. Uh, doing research, I can rent a tractor with a mower, which I was lucky to find starting July 29th. I have an opportunity to look into purchasing 
three point hitch mower for around the same money. The logistics in that I'm still working out. I don't know how viable it is. Um, the, to lease the tractor is 12,000 for four months and I have it reserved for six weeks. The one I could possibly purchase is, I believe it was 16,000. And I talked with Waylon that could possibly go on the back of their tractor. That's just for the mower? Just for the mower. The <laughs> downside of that is it is a three point hitch mower. Long term, if we have to mow ourselves, I'd want a mid mount on its own tractor. Some of the logistics with this three point are visibility. What would it take to hook to the tractor? I've not seen this mower. This all happened rather quickly. And what I was really asking for was to either be able to redirect the funds to rent the tractor to mow ourselves. If this mower that I can buy does materialize, permission to do that instead of rental. But I need to do one or the other. How far, how far behind are we in getting this started? This is usually? Normally they start mowing right after July 4th. Okay, so we're a couple weeks behind. Yes. And if we rent, we then have to have our personnel do that. Yes. And what will that do to production for you? <laughs> Productivity? Basically, if I'm not mistaken, it took the former contractor about six weeks to That's do the mowing. Okay. How many men? He, he normally ran two tractors. And you're going to... My intent is to run it and do what I can in the time I have. So you dedicate somebody full time to it or just hit or miss? No, we're going to have, if I'm paying $12,000, that's the one downside and I'll have to, machine hours and actual hours differ, but the rental is for 50 hours a week, machine hours. So I'll have to see, but my intent would be sun up to sunset, keep it going. So that means you definitely got to dedicate a man to it? Minimum one, yeah. So, yeah, it, so I have no choice. What are the budget implications? <coughs> that we were paying the former contractor 19 a year, mm -hmm. which is in this budget, and I was anticipating an, an unknown increase. So if I run it for six weeks, I'm about there. 19,000? With two men or one man? That's not labor, that's... Just the rental. That's so the labor is additional? Right. Yes. Our labor. And it's our employee. Our labor. Yes, but if they're doing this, they won't be able to do something that's else. That's right. Oh, yeah. It hurts me. And that's but it also hurts the budget, because you're going to, you're going to be short of money. Because the task going for the task I don't do. think it's going to implicate the budget, because instead of installing culverts, he's mowing. It's just the culvert doesn't get installed. Yeah, so that's it is. Yeah. So we're going to have to pay someone Why else to school covers. No, they're late. Like, <laughs> so, uh, so you have are we required expenses? by any anything to mow? Any of uh, our is there any state regular? I would have to look into that. But for visibility, I would think there would be something. I, I'd have to look. Yeah, but the visit, the, you're not mowing anything that's higher than a windshield of a, or a side of a car door. Right? I mean, you're talking three feet. Nothing we you're mowing. seven feet off the edge of the road. Right, no, I'm talking height-wise. Uh, some of the Japanese knotweed will be well above that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can think of a couple but of areas. You could possibly hit that, hit, just hit the knotweed and not mow everything, for instance. If we the had to. The problem is to. If we had to, not. It, yeah. Okay. We're going to do what we can do with it. Mike. The longer you let it go, the more behind you get because everything grows. Uh, I, I believe Japanese knotweed needs to be tackled regularly, and, but my concern is that the solution we have is much more expensive than having a contractor do it. Yeah, it is. But I can't find a contractor to bid it. Everyone's busy, or the contractor that did it formally called me and said, Ken, I can't do it. I can't hire enough help. I don't have the manpower. And neither do we. So the only thing I can come up with is to do it myself and some projects will have to wait. 
the, the, or not do it, which I don't really consider an option, but that's... And that's why it's better to buy it. We can do it when we... Yeah, but the trouble is he's buying something that may not... You can do this on rainy days, too, when you can't but the do anything is, else. Right, but he's going to buy something that may not <coughs> be a long-term yeah, solution. Of, right. I, from the time this all happened, the used one that I was looking at, I, I'm becoming more and more convinced it's less and less of an option. I, to be diligent prior to buying anything, I called a couple of other dealers, and that one is substantially under what they run, which now makes me question what am I going to look at? So you know, I, I can't go buy a Tomka toy for 16000 that's going to break down continuously. So if we, um, if we don't do anything, could we bring in a subcontractor to do some of the hard spots? They're all booked. I, I had an extremely difficult time even finding a tractor I could rent, say nothing of someone to run it. Given that we've you found a machine to rent, can we hire someone part time? We can try, but now you're paying 50, 50 hours a week for the machine, so you might as well run it fifty hours a week. And have somebody with a little familiarity right. with this kind of behavior. It feels like a very incomplete proposal, although I know we have to. We have yeah, to move. this. Yeah, I understand. <clears throat> There's very few contractors that do it, and they're all booked. I mean, I went all the way to, like, <laughs> Maine and out to the Great Lakes and to Canada and down into Connecticut and looking and there's getting nobody somebody here to do it is going to be costly if we go that far afield to find someone who would even come I it's going to be three a costly contractors situation. in New England that would do it and none of them responded so we're looking at maybe the 20 25 grand in labor probably without benefits Well, that has to be expensive. Do we have people? I don't know how I can hire anybody to do it either. Do yeah. we have people who can do yes. this? So, how about we approve renting the machine? Uh, this is this will be an experiment here, right? We rent a machine. <coughs> we put men to do the job. We, and then at the next meet, and then maybe you and Ray work out what what this means in terms of not being done, so that we're all aware what it means. Well, yeah. um, if we run this machine, Ken, and um, 50 hours a week, and you only get 20 out of it, and it breaks down, do they service it for you? I can look into that, but I'm, typically that's how it works. That's how it works. So is it just for six weeks or four months? I reserved it. I got a price for four weeks and reserved it for six. It took two months, months or six four weeks. Six weeks. Right. So it's twelve thousand for six weeks. No, it's twelve thousand for four week, four fifty hour weeks. So it's actually would be eighteen. I was anticipating. I got a monthly price, but I'm actually anticipating not being done in six weeks. I think we have a budget problem for next year already. We're, we're partway through the meeting and we've already heard about two things which we haven't budgeted for. So we need to take a look at what's happening. The reality is if we mow, it's going to just be lost production on the town unless you do hire somebody else, which I don't <coughs> know if we could. And um, what's the other thing that we haven't budgeted? The um, improvement yeah. to the IT equipment. Yeah. Oh. Well, you got a comment? Right. Just for FYI, I'm Wayland Lord. I live here in town. I'm a town employee, which water superintendent, Ken's highway superintendent. Um, our tractor's due to be replaced next year. So maybe in the long term, we could get together and s split the cost. Because after my presentation, you'll realize that we're not going to need the tractor for the purposes that we've used it in the past. So we'd probably downsize and maybe work with Ken to split the cost of a new tractor and get him equipped with what he needs. And do this properly next year and just rent this year? Correct. Just to help him out this year to get things maintained and then go together as a package. 
Star Tractor sets a lot of time on, of the year. It gets worked hard in the fall and worked hard in the spring. You know, the summer months, it'd be open for his right. mowing. So that sounds sensible. That's not fair, so. I, a heads up, what we really need, if we're going to continually do it ourselves, would be a mid-mounted mower. And they, the mower itself starts fifty to 60000 That's without a tractor. That's for capital budget discussion time. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm just, I got caught off guard. Uh, of course. And just preliminary research, but... Sounds like I'm hearing rent. Right. Rent. Right. And, and it sounds like it needs to be done now. Is that yes. short term or long term rental? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go there. I'd like to sure. make a motion that uh, we uh, have Ken do as good as he can on this more business for this year because like he said, it's, it's getting late in the season and it keeps getting later all the time. And uh, well, this more that he's got rented, the town uh, employee can run it. You can't get anybody right off the street to run it anyway. So they've got to have a little experience. So I would make a motion that we've got to do some mowing. The mowing is getting bad in the town. And so if uh, he can do something on this, and I've talked with him about it, and we also, uh, Phil was, had a good suggestion that we use the uh, uh, sewer tractor because they can't use that anymore <laughs> putting so much de sludge down because that'll come later but uh, they isn't going to have any use and it might just as well be used more in the roadsides so I make a motion that uh, we <coughs> have him do what he can about a road card more for the temporary situation for rental Perfect. is this just for the more itself or the Total unit. What the dealer told me on the one I looked into purchasing. No, I'm right, the rental. The rental. The rental is the tractor and mower. Tractor and mower. Okay, that's right. And that's the motion that's on the floor. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is yeah. there okay. a second, Jill, to that? I second it. Okay. Right. Ray seconded. All those in favor? Any any further discussion? No. All those in favor, say aye. 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 So get on it. Thank you. Thank you. And um, thank you, Ken. Thank you. Well, and you're here to give us some information on uh, disposal of our sludge. Correct? We uh, knew the state was coming for a long time, but I never expected it to come so abruptly. And Phil has spoken of it. And we had Phil, myself, and the inn who owns the properties, the fields behind the waste park plant, had a meeting. Uh, Tom Delvoice was supposed to be there, but I've been talking to him on the side. Um, we have a three-year contract with Tom Devilvoice, which started last year, so this year would be the second year, so we only have one more year, and then he pretty much done with him. So the alternative is, is a company called Cinesac. If you spread that around, you different board members of the um, You have a centrifuge on a, mounted on an 18-wheeler semi. They'll come into your plant and use poppers, which is a chemical to separate the water from the solids. They'll make a cake that's 24%, which to you and I looks like a solid. Um, then they contract with a company in New Hampshire that hauls it away to a landfill that's designed for recycling and uh, compost and fertilizers and different things. Um, the bad thing about it is expensive. <laughs> but we're not going through this by ourselves. Uh, the company's been down at Proctor's. They're presently in Chester. And they're buying more equipment as they can. Because uh, this is the way everybody's going. New Hampshire's outlawed it. Or really frowned on it for the last five, six years. Where it's landed by. Um, it's worked good for a lot of years. It worked excellent with corn. Because the farmer raised the corn, harvested it leave a little nibble and uh, we'd come in, land apply, and then cultivate it in, keep the birds out of it and what have you. That cycle worked for many years, 30, 40 years, since the 60s. 
the general public no longer likes to see land applying. Um, Woodstock Inn is you start to use their land for other purposes now, for recreation, bike paths, pedestrian areas along the, the river. Um, and they, they're, they're done. They just don't, they don't want it anymore, basically. We got one more year with Tom, and that's kind of iffy because, like with any EPA regulations, baseball game, whatever, you got to play by the rules. And he's just, there again, another person that doesn't have any manpower to plant the fields, to harvest them, to take the crop off the field, which removes nutrients so that you can apply again. So, so what so, is the cost of the new system? Uh, right here. So, so we have, at least this year. We have it, we've got to start thinking about this come budget time. We we'll start our budgets in the fall. We're good until this time next year. Hopefully. No, we need to act on it now because I still have 210,000 gallons and we can move. We put 150,000 on Deva Voice um, behind where True Value was. And the remainder is still in storage now. Yeah, Let me put it to you another way. Is there money enough to do this? In this budget just started July 1st. We'll have, to cut, we'll have to cut other things. Excuse me? We'll probably have to cut other things back. Like I said, we all, uh, years ago, Phil said he worked for a company that did this process, so it's not new technology. It's been coming, larger cities have been going this direction for a long time. Of course, they got larger budgets. But, uh, so uh, let me, uh, how much time have we got before we got to do something different? Next week? Th this company's done month? with Chester, and they said they could probably have a week opening in a week or two. To do it this year? Yes. But does Tom want it this year? Tom's already gotten what the maximum we can put on this. 150. Side. 150 well. down there. And you still have 210? Still have 210, plus we're producing it every day. Pardon me? <coughs> plus we're still producing it every day. It's a pipeline. All right, everybody. So, I'm just, what, do we, what does it cost us right now? And what is it going to cost us for the year 219 to 220? We sell it now. So it's a fall and a spring price? This is what our memo from Phil says. About, about 30,000 a time. And then as the rigs get. So it's going to cost 67,000 for 2019 2020. Is yeah, that the price we've got here? Yeah. I figured 30,000 for. Yeah. Right. This is 67, uh -huh. and then there's another 38 here for the spring of 2020. This is in our package. Right, but spring comes into this budget. Well, right, and then the fall of this year. So is there a short, if you have to pay this, is there going to be a shortfall this year? Do you have enough money in the well, budget? We'll have to cut something else then. When is the spring of 2020, before or after July 1st? When would you be spreading that? Normally we spread in October and May. May? Mm -hmm. So the this year, we're, this year we're, we're six weeks late. Okay. Getting the Tom's mm -hmm. And that's because of the spring that we had. Right. So we potentially have a charge of $100,000. 2019-2020. We've got a replacement of the tractor and we've got a replacement of the 4,000 gallon we'll tanker truck. With this. That can, we can, but you have to push them off like you But, and also there's upgrade to the task flow plan. Yes. Right. That, is, that's, that's, that's already that's in the budget. Yeah, already that's already, it. the wheels are already rolling. Nine. Equipment's coming in already for that. Okay. Well, um, are you asking for permission tonight to go ahead with this company? I am, but I can wait a week or two. Yes. Well, I don't see how we can authorize it because we're authorizing a charge of $100,000 a year that's not budgeted. Yeah, so you've got to show us where number. you can make the budget balance because we're already in debt. Two weeks into the budget and... Everybody's higher than expected. Yeah. So, all right. Um, um, let me do a little review of the, of the budget and uh, talk with you, and we'll see where we can come up with this 
but uh, come down and walk you through. We got to do something with it. I understand, but we can't. It's, like I said, we expect it for years, but never two weeks we can't thought. be. Okay, thank you for that information. And <laughs> on top of that, we've got some expenses for back forth repairs, some high pressure water hoses that's required. Um, that would roughly be another two thousand. How many? But that's a one-time yeah. expense. Two thousand. I think we can afford the two thousand. Two thousand. That's nothing. So if I can, <laughs> I guess I need to know whether to okay. order, order this stuff because you know it's got to be done sooner or later. Right. I'll, I'll work just. with you on it. We'll we'll come up with something. Okay. And, uh, All right. Talk to you. Come down tomorrow. And we can about. always. I can always call a special meeting the board of sewer. Yeah, Phil even was surprised. He expected it coming someday, yeah, but not so abruptly. Yeah, we were we were pretty warned. We, but we I talked about it last month, but it didn't. I'm sure if we'd have known it, it would have been an issue of budget. But, all right, thanks for the heads up. Yeah, I'd say we may have to push vehicles or tractors back a year. You may. Why don't you understand that? You may. We might have to. Okay. Thank you, Wayland. Thank you. All right. Okay, back to the <coughs> All right, budget. Nice. Back on economic development. Thank you for your patience. I would like to say that during this presentation, we're not going to add anything to the town's budget. <laughs> <laughs> this, <yes. laughs> okay. So there are. I'm going to stand over here. Is that all right? So you have hard copies of this if you want. Beth, pass them out, but you can look here. Um, there, there are three things I'd like to talk to you about uh, if we have time. The first two we need to do, with it, which is we have some six uh, community grants that we are recommending be approved. We declined several. The second is we have two expenditures that, that come from the EDC itself that we'd like you to present. Um, one that's on your agenda and one that has come up today that you, we have a couple of options for you to consider, um, including not proceeding. Uh, and then if we have time, I just want to give you a quick update on our overall direction that we're going in. We're going to come to you, I hope, next month with a more formal, I think in the past the select board has agreed on the broad objectives of the EDC and, and set those things, and, and we've been discussing those objectives, and we'd like to come back to you and have you re-agree on them um, from what we did three years ago. But uh, today I just want to give you an informal update on that. So that's what we're going <coughs> The first is, oh, sorry, Butch. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. So the first are, um, whoops, sorry. Uh, there are six community grants that we uh, reviewed this cycle. We had nine grants, I think, or eight, and we're recommending six. Um, just very briefly, uh, $2,000, $2,200 for the Sunday Jazz program. They're doubling the size of the program, and we're sort of funding the increase, um, uh, and it's already been, it's already been launched. Um, the second is a large grant. It's a grant for Pentangle to upgrade the lighting and sound system in the theater um, to allow them to book uh, additional events each year that they can't currently book because the lighting and the, and, the, and the sound is not adequate. So they estimate that they can do two or three additional events. Per, what convinced us to approve this was well, two things. One is they think they can do three, I think the number is three additional events per year which typically attract three, four, five hundred people um, that they would not be able to book otherwise, and that we think is economic development. The second is that this is a matching grant. Um, it's the total cost of the system is hundred thousand dollars. They've raised fifty. They've raised a matching grant of fifty. So this twenty thousand will get matched, um, you know, and get them pretty close to the to their final number. Do you, do you want to pause on each one, or should I just go through all six? Okay. Uh, the third one is uh, is a program called Home Share. This goes directly to one of our priorities, which is to increase, um, I'll call it small entry level housing. Home Share is a program that's been used in other cities to allow, um, basically, to allow people to offer long term rentals in their home by, sh in effect, sharing their home. Sometimes for elder, the reason why it's being run out of the Thompson Center is because elderly folks who sometimes want to have a younger person in the house to you know, be around and to maybe help them lift a table or to do some <coughs> errands and so forth in return for a lower rent. And so it's a real, it, senior communities and other places have found it's a, really, uh, it's a really excellent program and they think it will help their community, plus it'll help our housing problem. Um, and so this grant is a small grant for $7,700 to 
fund the startup costs of this. Then the Thompson Center will run it and it will be self-sustaining. Um, the fourth is for the fireworks for 3,275. The town um, in the past has, well, I mean, Mary can talk, but if I think I'm getting this right, the town has typically raised that funds this year. They were a bit short. It's possible that the grant will be less than this amount because you've been able to continue to fundraise. I don't know if there's, you have an update on that or, but anyway, it's a small, it's a small grant. It hasn't changed since okay. we last spoke. But it did, re it was reduced from the original right. request. Of the fifth is a, uh, an organization, a company really called Vermont Kitchen. This is a great, this is direct economic development in terms of creating, we think creating jobs. This is a young woman who's moved to Woodstock and has run two commercial kitchens in Boston shared commercial kitchens. So they buy a big, I don't know how big, uh, uh, they, they buy a big place, space, they set up a commercial kitchen, and then they rent pieces of it out for periods of time, like on an hourly or daily basis, to smaller food companies that can't, like you know, someone, you know, uh, Joe wants to start a cupcake company, but she can't afford to buy walk-in storage and big ovens and so forth, so she can rent you know, four hours a week from this kitchen, and you can have 10 or 15 or 20 food companies <coughs> participate. Um, so uh, she's spending 100, and she has a total budget of 130,000. She's asked the EDC for 30. This, we approved, what we approved was a grant of, well, sorry, what we recommend is a grant of 15,000 and a loan of 15,000. We've been working for the last couple of years to set up a loan program. Uh, whereby, and we've now got uh, the details pretty much worked out with Mascoma Bank, where they loan 15000 to um, to the applicant. Uh, we deposit $15,000 into an account as collateral. The, they handle the entire servicing of the loan. They do the risk assessment. It's, it's really just for applicants who don't have the collateral to get the loan. We put up the collateral. It's EDC money. It goes into a separate account. When the loan is paid back, we get the money back. So, we're so this is the first time we're, we're interested in this vehicle because we think it may apply in other cases as well. And in the end, the money comes back into the EDC fund to be <coughs> reused, let's say, three or four years later. Typically, the equipment leases are for three or, or loans are for three to five years. So, so we're excited about that. We, also, we think the underlying opportunity is a great opportunity to bring businesses to Woodstock, but we also are excited about the vehicle of, of having a loan program, which is much less expensive than an outright grant. And the last program is a pilot test to, um, to market Woodstock and the merchants in Woodstock to a different audience than we've been typically marketing to, which is regional shoppers. Um, working with Comcast, um, uh, Nick Farrell brought this proposal to us with Comcast. There are, we think, about 35 merchants in town who will sign up for it. It's a pilot test. Um, it's a good way to combine market research and uh, and actual advertising, instead of just hiring a consultant to advise us on this, this is actually going to, to do the advertising during the peak period, the fourth quarter, when, when you know, retailers, uh, merchants have, it's a critical time. Um, we have a lot of flexibility. Comcast will give us data throughout the program to, on, I think, Amy, on a weekly basis, perhaps, or semi-weekly, you know, every couple. Yeah, we can do bi-weekly. Bi-weekly basis to see which ads are working, which ones aren't. We can change the target segments and so forth. Um, and we can develop, we're confident that we can develop measures of performance that will tell us at the end of three months, did this work, and so forth. And so the marketing subcommittee of the EDC met with the community grant subcommittee and with Nick, and there have been some members, Susie's here, who's a marketing expert, and you know, so there's been a lot of discussion about this pilot test. Like all marketing, we're not 100% sure this is gonna work, which is why the proposal is for one quarter rather than for a year. So, um, yeah, anyway, so these are the six proposals that the community grants that we recommend you <coughs> fund. We have the funds for this. This does not, still doesn't use up our, our, our you know, full, our full funding, so. Are Any? we allowed to ask questions too? Excuse mm -hmm. me? Are we allowed to ask questions or do we have to wait for you to get yeah, that? Yeah, good questions. I thought it was a commercial, I thought it was a cooking school in Vermont Kitchen. No, well, no, Vermont Kitchen is a kitchen. Uh -huh. But they are one of the things that they will use the extra capacity that is created f from our grant is to offer cooking classes. Okay. Any questions or well, what do you think of um, approving all of these in one go? I think that if excuse me, if we think about approving all of these in one go, yeah. 
I'm listening. Since I represented one of them, I'm not I, I can't make a motion. <laughs> I'm listening. So I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve all the Economic Development Commission's recommendation. Grant request. I second it. Motion been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 I'm abstaining because I represented one of the applications. Oh, right. Okay. Great, thank you. Okay, the second is, and I've separated this out, I think on your agenda it's, it's under the same list, but I've called it expenditures, and there are two. Let's just focus on the first one, because you weren't expecting the second one. It, it came up today, and I'll, again, you can decide how to deal with it. But we were, this is separate, because this is not a community grant. This is the EDC asking for funding for a particular part of our operations, and so we just decided to present it as that. So we've asked you to fund uh, the, the annual, we've asked you, sorry, let me, let me just give some background here. We currently have um, a coordinator with an, an annual budget of $50,000 with a salary that's less than that, and that covers both administration and program management. That budget runs out on, ran out on June 30th. Um, we need both administrative support and program management support. Administration is, uh, um, you know, taking minutes, uh, posting meetings, handing the grant applications, handling the account, handling the accounting. There's a fair bit of paperwork in, you know, in, in this. Program management is a much broader role, engaging with the community, overseeing the visioning project, just as an example, um, uh, and, and increasingly as we move towards large projects and programs, uh, we're going to need, we're going to need that. Um, we would like to separate these two roles. They're currently combined in one. We think we can reduce our costs because we can pay administrative costs at administrative rates and program management costs at program management rates. The latter is higher. It's a, it's a much more you know, complicated task. But we want to adhere to the level of compensation for administrative tasks that the town has set for comparable positions. That's only reasonable. So we'd like to split these apart. We need a little bit of time to do that because we, we can't, well, you know, there's been, you know, the, uh, you know, managing hiring processes in town has gotten slowed down a little bit and we haven't posted the position. We, ha we needed to ask you permission first. So our proposal is, has two parts to it. One is to please, is to fund $50,000 for the year to cover these expenses. We expect to be, to come in below that but we're asking for the funding now. And in particular, to allow us to extend the current arrangements for two months. Oh, sorry, I forgot to do the calculation. It's 2 twelfths of 50,000. Um, I believe, it, that's not correct, Ms. No. Allen? No. I'm sorry, no, I apologize. I need to give you the exact number. I can tell you. Okay, it's, it's, um, it's. Two twelfths of 50,000. No, no, it's not two twelfths of 50,000. It's, it's, it's yeah, 40, it, right. It's 40, two twelfths of forty thousand. Right. So thank you, Sally. So we're asking for one sixth of forty thousand, which is six thousand six hundred and sixty six, I think. Um, so we're asking. Yes. Except we could round it up and make it's it six thousand six hundred sixty seven. Right. So we're asking for you to fund that specifically, or to, sorry, to allow us to extend the contract for two months to use six thousand six hundred sixty seven dollars of the 50,000 to pay for the first two months of, a, of the same contract that we currently have with the current coordinator. To give us two months to create new contracts by splitting the job into two, thereby lowering the cost. So the immediate, yeah. So you could either approve both or you, what we, what we really need you to approve is, is the two month extension. We would like you to approve the longer budget as well. If you, um, I know this is thinking outside the box a little bit, but is there anything to be gained by having these, the coordinator and the administrator work for the town and the EDC finance that yeah. so that they're basically town employees, they're hourly employees, they have their taxes withheld, right. and we're all above board and there's no... Right. 
you know, questions about the questions law. about right. the. We're. I think the EDC is not really equipped to. Um, I mean, we, we could. We have not yet really fully sort of thought through like how it gets paid for and so forth. Right. We, we know that we need the support, and what we're working on is to define those two job descriptions: how many hours and what would they do. Um, I, we've talked. I mean, informally, we've we've all talked about whether it could be town employees, whether it could be existing town employees who pay overtime or something that we would fund. I think uh, my, informally, there's a sense that that probably isn't capacity. Or alternatively, it could be employees of the town, you know, that would be hired and paid for by the EDC. I don't think we'd have any problem with that. In fact, I mean, there are some benefits to it, in in that we could, you know, have a desk here and 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 be, you know, just be. Easier to coordinate, right. perhaps, and so forth. And you know, with, and, and they're here. For, they're here for the twenty hours a week, and not working from home or whatever. Yeah, whatever oh, okay. amount of time. There's sure. Somebody here to. Right. There's also a, there's also and Charlie is more the expert on this, but they're they're at least for the administrative position. I think my understanding is that the labor laws would suggest that it needs to be a town employee for the administrative well, position. Right. I don't know for the project manager. I think is much less clear. So yeah, I, we could explore that. And frankly, one, the reason we propose the two months is because we need the time to write the job descriptions and split the jobs up, but maybe we use the two months to also explore that option. I mean, we're happy to, I don't think it, I don't think it would, I think we would be indifferent. Yeah, I just think it, it's a, it, it's, it's cleaner. It's, clear, it's clean, much cleaner. There's no, you know, down the road, whoever's, you know, it, it just, it's, Cut and dry. It's only employee, and you get paid by the town. And you know, everything's withdrawn, and there's no. I, I don't have a problem with that. I have a question. Yeah. Are you saying two people at 20 hours a week no. each? No. No. What? No. What we're currently in the, the coordinator position is currently 20 hours a week. Right. We are in the process of finalizing the. What, what the split would be, but it's okay. it, it's probably something like five to eight hours per week administrative at a lower cost, and 15 hours a week of a project manager or program manager at, at the current cost. Okay. And the combination of those two will allow us to reduce the cost somewhat. Okay. Because thank you. I think it would be interesting to look at the administrative person working for the town. I think if you had the project, I think the project manager would have many more questions around it. Right. I mean, not least to say that if you're hiring two extra employees, that's two new computers. And normally, right. and a, if you have a consultant, they provide their own computer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the cost would be good to compare. How about if we amend the request to say that we will explore each of these suggestions yeah. that you've just <coughs> during that two month period. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. And approve the two month extension. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't want to take off the table approving the, right. the longer one. That's no, no, I don't want to well, assume we, we won't, won't do that. that. There's a long one. But the next. I think that will need, need a little more work <laughs> and a little more um, I haven't quite convinced question you on that in there. Pardon? I haven't quite convinced you on that one. Because we don't really know what, and you admitted that yourself, that you're not sure. So um, I'm, I'll make a motion to approve the $6,667 extension of two months. I'll second that. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Good. That's not completely being disregarded, but I don't think we have enough information tonight. No, I'm fine with that. Okay? I think that's fine. Thank you. I was just more pushing back on principle because I feel like my role is to push back. But oh, no, no, I'm joking. Like I'm teasing. That. I'm teasing. Okay. So, do we have time to. Oh, oh sorry. Whoa, whoa. Sorry. Okay. So, Ray, you may need to help me through this and Beth. Um, there, there is a. I'm not sure if the minutes. if. I'm not sure if the summary fully reflected the Teagle's Landing. Did, did it include the Teagle's Landing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what we proposed, what the EDC approved, voted on and approved, sorry, let me step back. We would like, everyone would like to renovate and complete Teagle's Landing. Mm -hmm. The revitalization committee came with a proposal to uh, repair, to, 
to begin to repair to by replacing the steps and the railings, which are a safety hazard as well as not looking very nice. So it was considered the most urgent part. At the last meeting, or two meetings ago, we, uh, you, we recommended and you approved a $5,000 grant, and the village trustees matched the $5,000, and we had $10,000 to go towards what we thought would complete the stairs and the railings. We then have discovered that the cost of the stairs and the railings is, uh, is higher than that. And we, we encourage the revitalization committee to just come back to us with a whole package, to just do the whole thing at once, and we're being too timid. Mm -hmm. So the EDC voted to recommend funding of an additional $15,000 to pay for the steps and the railings. And that will, according to the new cost estimates, which are firmer, complete the, pa the payment of that. Is that correct? Am I getting this? You haven't voted on that. I'm sorry. Oh, gosh. Okay, got it. Yeah, okay. The EDC discussed, the EDC discussed that. And it was the intent of, and the EDC instructed the Revitalization Committee to please come back with a plan to do that. And three bids. And to have three competitive bids. The Revitalization Committee is trying to move as fast as they can, I think with good intention, because we'd really like to, first of all, we'd like to use it while it, before the winter, and secondly, because we'd really like to show something for the revitalization project's efforts. It was a good project, and there's some good suggestions. <coughs> but, you know, we've got the benches out there. In three days, the, you're going to see 90 flower pots and bump outs and so forth, but we'd like to <coughs> get as much momentum as possible. So the Revitalization Committee believes that by the time of the EDC meeting, two weeks from now, they will have three competitive bids. They currently have one already for a total, for a total additional cost of 39570 to complete Teagle's Landing. Stairs, railings, plantings, um, decorative pots, two picnic tables, boulder seating, repairing stone wall, contingency fees, and so forth. We can make the total project $50,000. To do all of Teagle's Landing. With the village's five thousand and the five thousand. Correct. Correct. So it's an additional thirty-nine thousand seven hundred and fifty. We maybe we're creating new legislation here that we're not entitled to do, but we thought we would ask if the select board had had a favorable view of that, that we could ask you to approve that tonight, subject to our approval of it. What we will do is vet vet that the program makes sense, we'll vet that there are three competitive bids, we will not exceed this cost. And that if we then approve it two weeks from now, you would then be comfortable. We just reverse the order. We're not trying to usurp your authority. We have, you know, I don't know whether, whether this has been done or not before, but that was... It has. Yeah. It has. Yeah. Um, I believe the trustees did one time, they voted to uh, at the EDC if it passed the EDC's muster that they would give their approval to the project. I'm a little uncomfortable about it though. Um, and, and given that we can organize special meetings very quickly, I would prefer to um, have the EDC approve it and then we arrange a meeting for a couple of days later. I think that would meet the same objective, to be honest. It was really more getting the timing of this than it was a desire to edge you out. Or they want to get that project started sooner or later, right. otherwise... But that would allow it. Yeah, if you want to do that, that's fine. And similarly, you could have a special EDC meeting, couldn't you? We, we, uh, so we'll commit to have a special EDC meeting as soon as we have the competitive bids. How's competitive that? Bid. Sorry? Yeah, because as soon as we have enough information to bid. assess it in detail, we'll hold that special meeting. Um, that's a good point. So you have a, a meeting the August... August 1st. 1st. Okay, um, which is two weeks away. I can't um, imagine you don't have the competitive bids. Do you think you'll have it all in you place can or by cannot, then? I cannot, I cannot no. imagine not having, not, three, having. not having three bids by then. Okay. You've already got one, so it's just... Right. And we've got the other, others are in pro, I mean, we think they're in process. Right. Okay, so basically what I think you're saying is, is let's both move from a scheduling point of view as fast as we can move, but let's do it in the regular order. That's my proposal. Do it in the proper way. Right. And um, so that we can warn a meeting as we should yeah. and let the press know and um, 
if Macy can have a crew here. It's important to do this so that everyone can. I understand it. I, I agree. Thank I you. think that's a very. I think it's a very good approach. And it's, so then there's no need to approve anything that, tonight. Just, you deny the request, that, which is great. Right, okay. do, John? Do we need a motion for it? Or? No. no, because just there's just nothing in front of you. We're not doing anything. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. so Thank you, John. Yeah, thank you. I think that's a very good solution. Okay, the last thing, and this is, um, as we sort of test this out, this is almost unreadable. Um, but I just wanted to take you, take five minutes and take you through, um, in effect, pretty close to what we're going to tell you next month. We'll tell you a little bit more, but I wanted to kind of get it out in public. We've talked about this, a number of people have. Three years ago, on December 13th, 2016, the EDC, after considering its direction, uh, came to you and said, okay, this is what we think you've asked us to do, and the select board, by you, it may not, I'm not sure it was on in 2016, the select board said, yes, this is the direction we want you to go. And remarkably, it, 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 it hasn't, what we now think should be our direction has not changed at all. It was, full, they, full, three years ago, the EDC said to you, we think we should focus on four things. Um, marketing would stop to visitors uh, to basically bring, you know, increase the number of visitors who are most likely to develop connections and contribute to the economy. Second was to expand housing support, and, I, and we've added and related services. That would be things like child care. I mean, if you, you can't move here if there isn't capacity in any of the child care programs and you have young kids. It might include things like transportation and so forth, but all related to getting people to move here and to have housing. Third is improving physical amenities. And we're talking here about amenities and not what I'll call basic infrastructure. It's not like asking EDC to build a new sewer line. You know, that's the town's responsibility, but a new village green or a new park or a new Teagle's Landing, those are, we're calling amenities. How we divide the line is, you know, we can argue about it, but I think most people would, you know, would, would make a clear distinction between infrastructure and amenities. And we want to, we think we should be funding amenities. And lastly, is supporting the businesses in town and business environment, creating an environment that's, you know, that allows people to create new businesses and encourages entrepreneurism and so forth. Those were the four objectives. We are going to come back to you and heartily endorse those. We think they should remain. Uh, interrupt me whenever you have. There's nothing for you to vote on, so if you want to make a comment, just please interrupt me, but I'll keep going. Um, so, and, and you've also told us, and we also told you back then that we want to focus on big projects. And since then, you and many people in the community have told us that we should be focused on big projects and kind of getting things done. And I think while we have, haven't forgotten the priorities, I don't think we focused enough on enough big projects. And that's, I think, an important change. I think we want to do fewer projects going forward and make them bigger. And I'll just show you some examples of that. So here's examples of big projects that might be attractive in each of these four areas. In terms of marketing, Woodstock, we current, this is, over the next five years, we can imagine spending $250,000 on our website. That's about what we spend now, $50,000 a year. Mm -hmm. So let's call that $250,000. But we can also imagine more advertising, whether it's TV advertising, like we talked about tonight, it could be paid advertising on the web, it could be uh, lots of different ways of driving more and more traffic to the website. Uh, let's call that 500,000. Um, under housing, we think, we, we, we think that housing creation needs to have a financial incentive. If it didn't need a financial incentive, it would be built. There would be more housing being built. It's not being built. And we've done this group of folks in town who have done some analysis of this and, and, um, and tried to develop some housing and were short. And we know, exactly, we know how much they were short by. It was about $40,000 a unit. And so that may not be the right number, but our objective is to say, let's put a stake in the ground and say the EDC would like to see 40 units of entry-level housing built over the next five years. To entry-level housing meaning someone who comes to work at the inn, uh, or maybe a young couple with one child and it's a small one bedroom, and maybe one of them works at a restaurant or one of them works remotely for a company in New York. Um, and that, so that's a million six. That's a, a big 40 units at 40,000 each. Is, could, could be a million six. Um, in terms of physical amenities, redoing the town green is probably in the order of six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars. Teagle's Landing, we just talked about, is 50,000. The River Trail, if, if the town were to pay for some of that, or somewhere in the range of 300 to 500,000, uh, 
the East End Park it has a four hundred thousand dollar program. Could be they need two hundred thousand. Maybe we can pay for that. Uh, downtown revitalization. There's more work to do. If the bump out works, they we're going to have more flowers and there's garbage cans and more tables and lots of other things. And then and then maintaining the kind of incentives that we currently have for storefronts for new businesses to form and so forth. Just like we did with Vermont Kitchens. Maybe that's one hundred fifty thousand. These are not programs that we're committing to at all. These are just ideas to give you a sense as to what the next five years might look like. And it's going to look very different than the last three years, and that's really the point. If this is a picture of the next five years, uh, it adds up to about $4 million if we did everything on this page. And I'm about to show you, beyond a shadow of a doubt, we can't do everything on this page, because there's no scenario in which we can do all of this. We just don't have enough money. Here's what the last five years, the last three years have looked like. 50, 49 projects, a good number of them in those areas, some things around housing. There's a study, where's the housing study? There it is. Um, some things around amenities, like the benches and the bump outs, and a little bit on Teagle's Landing, the lights, the flower pots. Um, there's marketing, where there's advertising. There's, uh, <coughs> Community Optimist Center supporting the businesses. There's the website. There's housing inf uh, necessary services, like if this is expanding uh, preschool capacity, um, the village green lighting, and so forth. The average, the average project here over the last three years is $14,000. The average project here is $90,000. Seven times bigger, six times bigger and a lot fewer of them. So the direction that we think we need to go in, and actually that we think we agreed to go in, and <laughs> agreed for us to go in, and that you're asking us to go in, is to do fewer things and to do bigger things. And so that's probably what we're going to come back to you with. And if, by the way, we're not going to come back to you and say these are the eight projects. We're going to come back to you and say these are the four priorities, and we're going to start working on what the projects are. We're going to get a lot of community input. <laughs> we don't know. It might be these. It might be. I mean, I'd be surprised if none of these show up on the final list, but I would be astonished if every one of them showed up on the final list. So this won't be the list. It's just to give you a sense of what we mean by big projects. Now, we can't do all of them. This adds up to four million. You see the money going into the piggy bank is 1.75. We're going to get about 1.75 million over the next, starting July 1, a few days ago. The next five years, we'll take in about 1.75 million. It's, it's 300,000 a year, but it's growing nicely. We're growing at about 8% a year, which is really good. <laughs> but there's no way that this number is going to be big enough to do this number. And that means we're going to have to prioritize. And so that means we're going to have to operate differently than we have in the past. In the past, people come to us and say, you have that big pot of money. Why won't you give me, I mean, I hate to pick up Mary, Mary and I've had this conversation. Why won't you give me $3,000 for the fireworks? It's a big, nice thing. And in the future, and we did, and it's a big, nice thing in the town. You know, it's great for the town. <coughs> and it attracts people. I think it is economic development. But in the future, we may have to say, uh, you know, if we do that, we're not going to be able to do Tiggles Landing. We're not going to be able to do <coughs> because that money needs to be dedicated to the green. So that's kind of the direction we're going in. And it's going to raise it's going to raise some questions that we're going to need to deal with. We might need your help in dealing with these. But we're aware of these issues, and I think we're going to have to deal with them with the community. The first issue is, what about all these smaller projects and events that have been funded in the past? What do we do? Do we just say no to everyone? Someone made a suggestion at the public meeting that we carve out a certain percentage of our budget. I'm going to say maybe 15%, which is about $45,000 a year and dedicate that to small projects, events, and things of, of that sort. Um, I'll be perfectly honest, this is my own personal opinion, I really don't want to do that. Because I, I think that's $45,000 taking away from this other stuff that's more important. But it may just be necessary to maintain community support and just as a practical matter. And certainly in the first year, I think we probably should carve out. So I think we'll come back to you next month and say, we'd like to carve out 45,000, some number, 15% of our budget for these smaller community projects. I, I personally hope that by the second year, 
we've got such a demand for these big projects that we say, look, we really need to put the money into the big projects, and we're just not going to do these small projects anymore. But I, I don't know how that'll go. That's still to be discussed. We know we have to deal with that question, though, because we think the community has come to expect some funding from us about these projects, and the projects are all great. They're all good projects. The lighting, the flower pots, the fireworks, and, you know, it's all good stuff. Second, if we're, making, if we're now going to start making big consequential decisions, these are big projects, multi-year projects, how do we ensure that the community has adequate input? And I just want to say that I'm sure you've heard from people that the EDC isn't, um, you know, doesn't let, doesn't make it easy for the community to have input, always. And we understand that, and we're going to change the way we operate. And the, it's not just me saying that, it's the whole commission, we understand it. Um, and, and we're, we're going to not just allow for it more flexibly, but we're going to promote it. And we're going to advertise our meetings. We're not just going to post them, which we're legally required to do. We're going to advertise them. All of these subcommittees, those four, those four committees, we're going to organize around those four committees. And all of those have to comply with the open meeting law. But we're not just going to post it. We're actually going to promote it. Because we think that you get the kind of discussion that you guys had on the short-term rentals. You end up with a better, whatever the decision is, you end up with a better decision. So we're very aware of the second problem. The third is, <laughs> will residents understand that if we pursue big projects, our large unspent funds, and everyone knows we have $400,000 in the bank. It's 367 now, mm -hmm. by the way, after you just approved all that. <laughs> we, everyone knows that we have that money in the bank. Are they going to understand that if we pursue big, big projects, that, that number, those large, unspent, those large unspent funds, initially, the first six or eight months, that number's going to go up, not down. If we're saving money, I'll just pick a project that you know, Ray has talked about. Let's rebuild the green for $750,000. Well, we're not going to start spending that money next week. I don't know how long it will take Ray to, first, to decide that we want to do it. But secondly, what, you know, how long would, let's say we decided tomorrow to, to do the green. When would we spend the first dollar? You know, six months from now, nine months from now? If, if they started tomorrow, you'd probably spend in 30 days, it'd be a monthly bill. Okay, well, all right. No, is that what you're looking well, for? No, 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 what I'm thinking is, is, that, the re is, that, is that it's going to take time for us to develop plans oh, yeah. to yeah. do the green. And so then maybe we're paying for a consultant or something. But yeah, you're going to have to yeah. somebody design it. Okay, fine. But fundamentally, my point is, is that the big, if we start doing these big projects, the big spending is going to be out a little ways, which means that in the short term, what people are going to see is, here's our new strategy, we have even more money in the bank than we had before. It looks like we're going to be doing even less. And we're just going to have to communicate to the town that if we adopt this approach where we do big projects, that big projects take a long time, we're just going to have to condition everyone to understand that the bank account is initially is going to go up. Because we get the money, you know, the money comes in every quarter, seventy, eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000 a quarter. And we're not going to be, if we do these big projects, we're not going to be able to spend it that fast unless we spend it recklessly. Now, by, the, by a year from now, the number will go down, or 18 months from now, but initially. So we need to be aware of that. We are aware of it. And then the last question is just something that comes up, and I just thought we should put it on the table. <coughs> is that we keep, we keep hearing, no, I don't know if it's from a lot of people or a few people, but the comment keeps coming up. Why shouldn't we just take the 1% tax revenue and use it to reduce our taxes or to pay for the potholes? Pay for the what? Sidewalks. The sidewalks or the potholes or whatever. And, <laughs> and you can do that. Um, you know, and it would add, it would take a, what, a six million dollar budget and reduce it one time by five percent. Oh, as you've heard tonight, our budget needs to go up, so right. perhaps it would help pay for the increase. Could pay for the increase, right. But if you do that, I would argue pretty strongly that the economy of Woodstock is not going to improve because the grass is cut shorter. Mm -hmm. Or because the sewage is, well, the sewage actually might. <laughs> <laughs> there, I think I can. I want to talk about it. So, you know, I, and I think that actually is the fundamental difference between, uh, you know, whether it's us, let, let's put it this way, someone, it's either going to be us or it's going to be you, is going to have to do this. Let me go back. Someone's going to have, whoops. Someone's going to have to do this. Because, and, and this isn't like cutting the grass and so forth. It's different. Economic development is different. It, it, and I know the townspeople can be frustrated at what the EDC is doing. If we're not doing the right job or a good job, I would ask you to give us some time, give us a year to prove this strategy out. If it doesn't work, get another EDC or get another group. <coughs> but someone's good, but you can't just, it would not make sense for Woodstock to just take the money 
and put it towards the, the grass cutting and the sludge because someone has to do this and I think you know I think now that we're I think the th what we've learned over the past three years is incredibly valuable a lot of what we're going to do is the same. The priorities are the same. You agreed to them and we proposed them. Everyone agrees that those are the priorities. We just need to focus on bigger projects that have a more visible impact, and we're ready to do that. So, so anyway, this is just a preview for next month. Um, we'll come back to you, and I think, I think the select board should formally adopt something that we give you in writing that says this is roughly what we're doing. And we'll also give you a budget that says here's how we're going to allocate the funds across those areas and so forth. But that's the direction. I mean, I hope it's next month. I think we just need one more meeting. So. Thank you. Questions or comments? Do I have a comment? Um, it just seems to me that a lot more money should go into um, provide incentives to new businesses. And there's just all sorts of stuff that we could do. $150,000 is, I mean, I hope that these are just ballpark figures. The, and the, not only are they, are they, they're not even ballpark figures. Mm -hmm. just these, these were made up by me. Okay. Me personally. Okay. We're now about to start a process where these four groups, we, we've divided up the EDC, we know who's interested. We're going to ask for community members to join these different groups as well. And we're going to ask them to come up with their list. And then the EDC will try to prioritize across them. And each group will make, I'm sure, I hope, each group will come up with more than this. Mm -hmm. And maybe this bottom group will come up with 10 times that because of what you just said. Mm -hmm. This is just to show what we mean by big projects. Okay. So, it's not at all. Uh, the only comment I would say is just going back to the, the idea of using those the options tax funds to reduce taxes would take another vote from the community because the way it's set up right now, it is not <coughs> for that purpose. Okay. Well, thanks, John. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay. Okay, the next is uh, Norman Williams. Collaborator. Are you Norman Williams? <laughs> <laughs> Not even remotely related. <laughs> uh, good evening. Uh, I'm Ron Miller. I'm the president of the board of trustees of Norman Williams Public Library. And Amanda Merck, our executive director, is also here tonight. This will be a very brief report. I just wanted to update you on um, at the end of our fiscal year, at, at the end of June, and what it looks like going forward. Uh, and tell you a little bit about the capital campaign. You probably read about it in, in all the papers recently, so I'm here to answer any questions about that. Um, first, I want to say uh, I'm not here as, as the town representative anymore. Uh, when, when I was elected president of the board, I, I realized I needed to step down as the representative, and I'll talk a little later about uh, finding a new representative, but it, it still felt important to, to come to you and let you know what we're doing with uh, town money uh, as well as the um, uh, private money that we're able to raise. So first, a very quick recap of, of our, our fiscal year that we just ended a couple weeks ago. Uh, on our budget of 550000 um, we were only $6,400 short of breaking even, so that's about 1.1%. It came very close to breaking even. Um, and uh, we were able to cover that small shortfall from just what we had in, in our bank accounts. We did not have to go to the endowment or, or anything extraordinary for that. Um, in fact, we think we're going to be able to add a couple hundred thousand to the endowment um, uh, this year. Uh, we'll know that uh, pretty soon. So we're uh, very conscious about <coughs> growing the endowment for, for the future and not rating it uh, for present needs. Um, let's see, so that's, that's, how we, that's how we are at this point. Now we're going into the new fiscal year, just began, and that's the document that I uh, sent to you. Uh, you saw this last year, uh, and the numbers are, are mostly pretty similar. Uh, as you'll see, 36% of our total operating budget comes from the town of Woodstock, and uh, we couldn't have the, the wonderful library that we do without the support of, of the people of the town, so we, we really do uh, value that. Uh, at the same time, we still need to raise the other 64%, and uh, I can tell you that the, the Board of Trustees and the, the staff are working very hard to, to maintain our budget and, and make sure the library continues to serve uh, 
uh, people. And you can see on here where, where that money goes. Most of it is going to the staff uh, so that they can be there um, helping uh, patrons every day, helping um, uh, with computer skills and research questions and everything else that librarians do. Uh, so that, that's basically all I wanted to say about this, but to uh, open it up if you have any, any comments or questions about how we're spending the money. It seems that surprising to me that only 8% goes to your collection. Um, yes, it looks like a small number mm -hmm. compared to salaries. Do you want to say anything as a librarian about whether that's a, what that number means? Yeah, so I don't want to talk out of turn and give data that I can't back up right now, but <clears throat> I would certainly be happy to sit with you and go over the survey. Um, from the Vermont Department of Libraries does a survey of all public libraries in the state of Vermont and without having those numbers right in front of me I can't speak deeply to it but I can say that we spend more on our collection than many other towns our size and I'm more than happy to back that up with no, data. I'm just interested. Yeah. So that's it's very generous for a collection for a, a village of 3,000 souls. And that's what um, you pay but you also have collection items and things that are donated to you. Is that yes. Right? So it's not all paid for. So, excellent point. Um, I didn't think of that. That skipped my mind. Um, there have been so many numbers here tonight. <laughs> but uh, Mrs. Riley brings up a beautiful um, point here that we receive donations of very good quality, excellent, you know, gently used books mm -hmm. every single day of, that we're open. People drop off books for us or we pick them up at their homes and we have wonderful volunteer staff who go, who call through them and we're able to take, I mean, some of them have just come out, somebody maybe ordered it from Amazon mm -hmm. or bought it from the Yankee Bookshop and they give it to us and we're able to add those new good quality books to our collection so we offset the cost of purchasing new books through our, um, <clears throat> our book, book reps, book right. dealers that we deal with. Does that, do you feel like that answers? Yes. Okay, great. Any other questions or comments on our budget? No. On the budget, no. You were going to talk to us about the representative. Didn't you realize when you came on as our representative, you had to find a suitable replacement <laughs> before you could move on? I wasn't expecting to move on so quickly. Oh, okay. I, I thought I'd be a backbencher on this board for a year or two, but... Uh, didn't happen. Uh, well, I can talk about that next. So uh, we have a nominating committee that is um, going to become uh, active uh, in the next week or two and start looking for uh, new trustee candidates. And we will ask um, uh, each of them if they would like to serve as the town representative. Uh, if if you want to do your own search and find people to serve on our board, um, and please please. Please do so. No, we'd like you to. <laughs> we would love if you could, if the board could make a okay. recommendation. Okay, all right, we'll make a recommendation. Um, uh, so, yeah, another couple of months we should have, have a name or two for you. And you're good with that one in the meantime? Yes, yeah, well, I've, I'm hoping to add two or three more board members before the end of the year, but we, we have 11 members now, and okay. uh, feels like a strong board. Okay. Um, uh, and you know, I'm here now, communicating with you, so I don't I don't feel the absence of a of a well, town representative. That's important for you to realize that while we do not have an active board member you are always welcome to come to these meetings. Let Beth know by the Wednesday before any of our meetings, and you can be included on the agenda, and you're welcome. Okay, and please summon us if, if there's anything you want to talk about. Thank you. Uh, so now let me briefly talk about the, the uh, heating and cooling system and the capital campaign that we've started um, for that. Uh, we've spent several months researching uh, the need uh, as you probably know, the entire system needs to be replaced. It's just been falling apart one piece at a time. Uh, we learned a few months ago that we cannot simply keep fixing it. We have to replace the system. Uh, so we've spoken to several contractors, uh, we, one of whom suggested a, an engineer in Rutland who could advise us and design the new system. Uh, and that's what we've been doing for the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. On Monday next week, he's going to be presenting his design 
and we'll decide uh, whether to move forward with that. Uh, he's estimated that the system will cost a half a million dollars uh, to fully implement, and so we've launched our capital campaign to raise 500000 Again, we don't want to take it out of the endowment. We want to bring in uh, new money from donors uh, if we can. We're not asking the town for, for anything. Uh, we think we can get the money from foundations uh, and donors. Um, what, what else to say about that? We, it, it, we expect the, the actual work to get started by September or so, and so that the building will be properly heated by the winter. <coughs> Now, the last time we spoke about this, maybe six months ago, I know you, Butch, said maybe, maybe there was some economy of scale if we could combine the library project with the town hall project. Um, we're open to that, but I, I don't see how that would work, really, at this point, because it's, it's two very different projects, but I'm certainly happy to, to talk uh, if, it, if it makes any sense. No, I think you're well on your way, and we're well on our way, so, yeah. As okay. long as we're both okay. That's yeah. all that matters in the town. Get it, get it done. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so any, any questions about, do you about want, that project? Do you want to update about how much we've raised so far? Oh, how yeah. Much we need to? Yeah, we, we're, we're halfway, right? We're Overall. more than halfway. So our goal is $500,000, half a million, and um, by a lot of quiet, kind of private, anonymous donations behind the scenes, we have received... We only need to raise one hundred and sixty-four thousand dollars more. Wow! Wow! That's so we already have. <laughs> who's the math whiz here? Three hundred thirty-six thousand. So, so we are starting to feel really good. Although, um, this is the time when we are really asking for everybody. You know, drop a quarter in the cup. I mean, that might sound a little bit kind of tacky but we every single dollar at this point helps and we really have to meet that goal and get you know get moving on the project so we're not no gift is too small is what i'm saying tonight or too big right of course, of course. no gift is too big but we're also into that kind of you know final final uh final stretch there where we really want to get you know full community engagement in the library so and Amanda just told me that they're making a banner which will have one of those thermometers where, where yeah. we'll see how we're, how we're doing. Although we, hurry up. we don't. Temperature's rising. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what we So the other, if I, can, if I may, ahead, not, um, I just wanted to mention too that while this is going on, in case people from the town, you know, ask any of you um, select board members, um, you can let them know that the library is not in any way closed, that we actually do still have air conditioning in the entire children's room, which is our whole basement level. Um, I don't happen to know the square foot of the children's room, but it is huge. And we're inviting, you know, the whole community. It's staying cool during the day. Um, I've relocated staff down there so we can keep staff functions going. And um, we may be doing some of the book stock programs down in the children's room. I mean, that's, you know, we just have to kind of be flexible and we'll be flexible. And then even in our upper levels, you know, Mother Nature, <clears throat> we open the doors in the morning and pull, using fans, we pull the cool air in. And um, we try to keep people as comfortable as possible, both staff and the public. And I think we've been really successful. We're getting a lot of positive feedback about that. So please, if anyone asks you, the library is open for business. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. That's all Thank I have. Any, anything Thank you. else? Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Okay. Uh, oh. There's more meetings being posted legally now for open meeting law. Jeff, um, Beth has Beth a question, question oh, for you. And, um, and because Beth. the EDC is talking about open meeting law and posting more meetings and there's more groups that are going to be posting more meetings, <coughs> is there a possibility of making the space for public meeting notices to be larger since that's such a small yep, At the library? Yes. Absolutely. Who do I talk to about doing that? Yeah. You. We can make that happen. That would you be just great. come on down so and ask for me. Small. <laughs> yes. I don't think no. It's very readable where it is. Yeah. I, but you know what? I would love to work with you on that, and we will make that happen. Great. We okay. could probably make that happen tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good, Good suggestion. Okay. So, moving right along.
the next uh, thing on our agenda is the proposals from uh, for the engineer design services proposal by John Penny. We have two proposals in front of us. One is for the town hall, and the other is for the upstairs office space. Can so, I talk to these since I was at the meeting? Yep. So um, these are proposals for engineer design. So the situation, it sounds like a repetition of the library, but the situation is that uh, the cooling system used for the town offices is 37 years old and is on its last and final legs. Um, and last year it actually broke down and um, it could happen again this year. So we've taken some temporary measures by putting an extra small um, portable heat cooling unit in that room to see if we can't get through the summer. And then the air handling system of the theatre also broke down a few weekends ago and um, we have that limping along and we need to cross our fingers and pray that that will take us through the summer. Um, so the short term fixes are being made as best they can but there's no guarantee that it's going to work. So this work um, that John Penny is suggesting is designing a new <coughs> system. and. Well, it has to be done. However, we need to think about the schedule of it because, and we need to think about whether the proposal is adaptable enough. Because is what? Uh, ad the proposal is what? Uh, the system that he suggests is adaptable because we still don't have a master plan for the town hall. So really, we don't want to, I don't think we want to design systems when our town hall may, may change. So I believe that these proposals are giving us a very good idea of what it costs to design mechanical systems, uh, and it's expensive. But I wouldn't suggest that we approve anything until we start talking about a, just doing a master plan and then doing what we need to do. I hope that we have systems that will limp along this summer and take us through, and then this is work that needs well, to be done. Well, we might want to get them into they fall anyway. Right. I, I'm, I'm only looking at something that we can put, get into the budget. Right now we have $50,000 set aside for town hall improvements. Uh, so I, I would like to see us get this on board so we have some idea. And if we have to expand it at a later date, and we have to, but at least this gives us something to budget for. My concern with that is that the fifty thousand dollars went into the budget for brickwork and exterior yeah. work. Well, the fifty thousand would only cover help cover these costs for these engineering studies. Mm -hmm. That's all. It's I, not going to. Yeah. I, I I think we need. My recommendation is to table this, take note of the numbers and how large they are, develop a master plan for the town hall, and then start really considering how much the total picture costs. Well, in reality, I think a master plan for the town hall is a long ways out, but a lot longer than the air condition is going to last. So you're only talking yeah. $15,000 yeah, to, to, to get these engineer studies started. Yeah. Well, I think you want to have it so that if we need to do it in the spring, you can have it done. In, in, the one, the one question I have is that if, if there are going to be improvements made to the town hall, especially in energy efficiency, that could really impact the design of an HVAC system. So in terms of what John Penny is proposing to do, I mean, he can do a design, but if, if the, cal the heating and cooling calculations change, how adaptable is his design? looking down the road at improvements that are done to the building. I think that's all something that, if you read the fine print here, I think it's all in there, okay. that he expects there to be some modifications to this. But I think that we need to go ahead with some kind of a design, and who knows if we'll do the work or not, but at least we have a, something if, if it breaks down entirely, we got to move. I, I, and who knows where this building's going to go? Right. Got, right. Got and after, after tonight, spending all the extra money we don't have, 
<laughs> there's not going to be a lot of work we got to we got to start pulling money from places so i would take i would take the money while you have it and spend it on the engineering design and see where we go from there I don't think the town hall will be as fortunate as the well, library in raising a half a million dollars. To <laughs> maybe what we can do, maybe, maybe the approach we can take is more like like the pentangle lights that we approved tonight. The, back, the, the, the background to that is that they are lights. If you change the configuration of the building, <coughs> the lights are still lights and they can be moved to a different location, whatever yeah. happens. Well, I wonder if you can come up with a cooling system that has that same thing. Well, I think he... They could probably... He need a base to start with. And I don't see us... If we need to start pulling money from other areas to pay for the tractor, the sewer, it's going to come from someplace. Mm -hmm. So I, my, my suggestion is to at least get a base study done so we know what we're talking about and, and potentially yeah. put it in the next for next year's budget so we can get something. You're not gonna get you're not gonna get through next summer. Work. So there's, there's whether we improve yeah. the building or not, we need to do something. And I say do what we can now. Every system is adaptable. I, I, no matter what anyone says. Uh, it, um, it can be adaptable. If you read down through these these different phases and the the, the final phase is construction phase. So let's get some of these things um, I'd it like to it mention the comment that he makes on, um, I, th I think it's the bottom of page two on the other one, but this is page three, and the same thing is in both of these proposals, that his organization is committed to the design um, with s that are sustainable, energy conserving, and environmentally responsible. Um, so when the energy program is developed and begins to be put into effect here, I believe this indicates that he is committed to any sustainable measures that we take. Right. I just think we should, I mean, maybe we can approve the money, although it's not budgeted, but I don't think we should have him start the work yet because I think we should wait for the study that is coming very soon on the structural engineering that will tell us whether we're going to move sooner rather than later. And um, we should have him do this, not yet, but, but by next spring, we should have a we should have some sort of idea about how we can get through another summer. Well, I think these two things walk together: this and the engineering study. I I really think Joe, we should move forward and accept this and these two proposals and and head through with the design. We got a long ways to go before we get to the construction phase of this these two proposals. So then we need to at least say we could change things quite a lot and we need the system to be adapted. Well it says in here if you read it that he worked with the with us to design these things so Yes. But what if we make major change what if we suggest in the master plan that we're going to do something quite different with for example this room. I see that a long ways down the road. Long this this system's not going to last that long. The system will. <laughs> the system might last this summer if we're lucky. Yeah, that's right. right. And, and to to come up with a plan for designing this building, for the changes this building is going to be several summers. Yeah, it's not going to happen in a year. We have to. Can't even I, decide on short-term rentals. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll I'll make a motion that we accept these proposals. To get this thing going, otherwise it's going to be stalled again. I second it. Motion has been made and seconded that we approve these two proposals for the engineering, right. design, and study. Study and design. Any further discussion? I would like to be the person that works with John Penny to. Um, Make to, to see that this works for us. Having had the initial conversations and having been involved in all of the energy work so far. OK, 
Okay, well, I have a motion on the floor. Can we add that to the motion? Or do um, we have to make another one? I would have some later comments about that, I think. Okay. Okay. So, um, all in favor say aye. 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 Um, I haven't I'm, voted. I like. Oh. Jill hasn't voted. Jill hasn't voted. Jill, Jill. I don't think we should do this yet. Yeah, but okay. I voted. I voted. I voted. No. Okay. So one no. Okay. All right. This is an important statement. Okay. Now, where are we here? Uh, dump truck. We've done. Truck permits is next. John? Yep, I reviewed the truck permit and uh, it seems all right, so I recommend we approve it. Do we vote on that, usually? Yes. Okay, do I need a motion? Oh, well, he moved to approve okay. it. I second that motion. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the truck permit. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Now, the Board of Sewer Commissioners. Okay. Back it for that. Yes, we have a couple <laughs> things here. I don't know what they do. It's all there, but I know, just, I know. just paper after just, paper. Just and I was so good with paper, too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. These are all the minutes. So. I don't know what order yours are in, but somebody can get started. Okay, Sarah Ferguson. All right. You would do that. And, uh, and okay. um, she's looking to increase by 240 gallons per day at Five Pine Street. She's adding two bedrooms to the existing floor plan of the property. Here's a copy of her permit, or of her application to the zoning office. And she has um, submitted a check. I believe that's mentioned in here. Yeah. That Beth has received the check. And that, and she's received the um, letter of allocation from the town, from the manager's office. So I make a motion we approve Sarah Ferguson's request for additional wastewater use. I'll second it. Motion's been made and seconded to approve Sarah Ferguson's check. proposal for an additional wastewater discharge. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. The next one second request yeah, is please. James McCall. James McCall. Um, an error was made in sending his bill to the correct address due to, some, due to some confusing address change information that came to the office. He was billed um, for penalty and interest. The total is 5763. The manifest error was made here. And I propose that we waive the penalty and interest for James McCall. I'll second that. Motion's been made and seconded that we waive the penalty. And um, that's a total of 5763. Yes. All those in, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank aye. You. And the next one is the Woodstock Christian, Christian Child School. Care. Don't really mail them much. Um, there is no additional gallons per day anticipated, um, so no fee has been assessed. The application is complete. I propose that we <coughs> approve the application <coughs> to add four students I'll and three it. staff members at, Woods at First Congregational Church of Woodstock, the location of the Woodstock Christian Child Care. I'll second it. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. So you have your financial statement in front of you, which is 
uh, I would say is probably pretty close to being accurate. There know there's still some things to come in. A um, couple adjustments need to be made. <coughs> <coughs> so this is extremely concerning. This is what? Concerning. It's a potential yeah. $500,000 shortfall. If I'm reading this right. That's what it says. Almost 501. Fire department came in eighteen thousand dollars under, almost nineteen thousand. And um, there's some grant income that we have yes, not received. Yeah, that might be that's significant. Yeah. And there's some it's significantly feedback. more than the five hundred and two. Okay. Yeah, that's true. So we won't thank, panic. Thanks for bringing that so up. So we're going to yeah. cross our fingers that the sending entities do that. So right. I think it would be good to look at the budget we have for next year, or you know now, with this in mind and see how we might want to change At that. least by the next meeting. Yeah. Because it should be, I would say, done by the yes. next meeting. Well, what we have to determine is where this grant is, where that yes. uh, those funds are coming from and how soon we can expect them. Okay, and then make an estimate. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So um, uh, we have no citizens. They've all left us. They're, uh, they're all gone, but we have minutes to approve. And we have to go um, yes. into executive session. Sure. Do, do so you want to approve the minutes first? I think we After should. After approval of the minutes, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I propose a motion to approve all the minutes presented. I'll second that motion. Motion's been made and seconded to approve all the minutes. As presented. As presented from May 21st to July 8th. Any further discussion? All those in favor, ayes? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Um, okay. I make a motion <coughs> that we go into executive session after which we have um, expense warrants to approve before we adjourn the meeting. I second that with a five minute break. Five, five minute, minute break? break. Yeah. Can, uh, can I, is it possible that we sign the expense warrant so that Beth can go home before we have executive session or does that yeah. not work? Good for me. What's for me? Who locks up? <laughs> <laughs> Beth well, and I. Okay. I so will we'll lock up the downstairs way if if you'll do All right. All right. That'll be, we can do that in five minutes. That'll be oh, a yeah. nice five minute break. No, we can do the expense warrant <coughs> house. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, I mean, I mean after, before yeah. the five minute break. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. All okay. right. Well. So, Mr. Ryan, you, you so we have that? not gone into Excuse me. Not you need to vote that motion. Oh, we sure. made the motion. It's been approved. Yeah. We're going to sign expense warrants first. Take a five-minute break and meet an executive session. All in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Okay.